let's look at the role of the hypothalamus in hunger and satiety. Now, there are a couple of ways to pronounce that uh, word, satiety. You can say satiety as well, but I like to say satiety. It's just easier for me to say, I guess. Um, so let's look at the role of the hypothalamus in hunger or in the feeling of fullness, as in satiety. Um, the lateral hypothalamus and the ventromedial hypothalamus have both been identified as um, parts in the brain that will help us to either feel hungry, which is important, or to feel full, which is just as important. Now, the ventromedial hypothalamus, let's look at that first. When uh, it is lesioned or cut, when that portion of the hypothalamus, the ventromedial hypothalamus, is damaged, there is an increase in eating. When it is stimulated, there is a decrease in eating behavior. Ventromedial hypothalamus, when it is lesioned, it increases eating. And when it is stimulated, it decreases eating. The lateral hypothalamus is the opposite. When it is lesioned, it decreases eating. And when it is stimulated, it increases eating. Now let's look at how glucose and the ventral medial hypothalamus and the lateral hypothalamus all work together in eating behaviors. When we eat, there's an increase in blood glucose and the ventral medial hypothalamus is activated. And when that's activated, remember, it produces a sense of fullness or satiety. So we should stop eating. Then there's a decrease in the glucose in the bloodstream and the lateral hypothalamus is then activated, which then results in hunger. So this is the dual center feeding model. Simply put, a homeostatic model of eating behavior for human beings doesn't work. A homeostatic model uh, is simply based on uh, physiological cues and uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with um, social behaviors, whether or not uh, the food is palatable. And palatability simply means that you really are enjoying that food, that it, it tastes really good. And typically those foods that are high in palatability have a lot of sugars and fats um, within them. Um, the other thing that plays a, a role in our eating behaviors are the external cues, such as commercials, walking by a vending machine that has your favorite candy bar in it, and then different sights and scents uh, as you move through the day um, that kind of bombard us externally, and then internal cues, uh, depression, boredom, and even habitual meal times. Thus, human behavior in eating is not driven simply by the need for energy, but there are many, many other factors that play into the role of eating behaviors.